Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Blue Eddy AC200P. This is a power unit that may be what you need when the power goes out. So Tanya and I are dabbling with solar power. We are really looking at solar power for our farm. And the main reason is, is last year, uh, there was times last year that we would lose power three times in one week. It was so hot, there was a hard time for the uh, electric company to get transformers. Transformers kept blowing and we kept losing power. So we would run out, get the generator started up, plug it into the refrigerator or the freezer, you know, not knowing if the power is gonna come right back on or if it was gonna stay off for six to eight hours or sometimes even almost 24 hours. Those are the kind of things that we went through last year. We were really excited when Blue Eddie reached out to us to do a review on this solar generator. Solar generator, power station, there's a numerous things it can be. If you add solar panels to it, then it's a solar generator. If you don't, then it's just kind of a backup power station. Either way, it's got multiple functions, so let's get into it. So if you're just looking for specific information, we're gonna put chapters in this video and you can go along the bottom of the screen or you can go in the description and click on the, the chapter that you wanna go see. The Blue Eddy AC200P is 2000 watts continuous AC pure sine wave power. Well, that's a mouthful to say, but it also provides up to 4,800 watts of surge. And what this means is like when you turn a power saw on or a power tool, there's an initial surge that it needs a little more oomph to get it turned over. A good example is a table saw that may be rated at like 2,000 watts continuous power. However, when you first turn that table saw on, there will be a surge. It has a 200 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery, which for me, you know, what does that really mean? It means that you can make a whole lot of coffee. The reason lithium iron phosphate is so important is that that type of battery chemistry will allow the battery to recharge and from discharge to full charge, 3,500 cycles. And at the end of that 3,500 cycles, it'll still have 80% of its capacity. That's about three times longer than lead acid batteries and lead acid batteries you can't let discharge past 50 percent so you really don't even get the same it's just not apples to apples it has 17 outlets of different sizes and capacities and you can charge multiple devices at once it even has two uh wireless cell phone chargers on top and that's a pretty neat thing especially for camping this is a great uh battery pack for camping I could really see this thing being left at a campsite with the solar panels up. You go off for your adventure for the day, you come back and your batteries are charged up and you're ready to use it. It's a really good solar generator for outdoor activities, camping, and even home use. It has seven recharging methods. That's a lot. You can charge it with the AC power from the wall. You can use solar. Uh, you can charge it with your car, you can car charge it with a generator, you can charge it with another battery. It's just unlimited how you can recharge this. This unit can take up to 700 watts of solar input. And on top of that, you can put 700 watts of solar input at one time along with 500 watts of AC wall power. So you can really charge it fast. Other attributes is that it's so quiet and it doesn't release any kind of gases. Like you can't put a generator inside your house. Well, with this Blue Eddy, you can put the solar generator inside the house, run cables outside the house to solar panels, and it'll just sit there quietly. You may hear under like an extreme load, a little tiny fan cooling it off. But honestly, it's just so quiet, it doesn't matter. Now we're not going to do an unboxing because there's literally hundreds of unboxing videos on the internet. We're just going to start walking you through the unit. Another side note is that we didn't just take it out of the box and start reviewing it. We've had this a couple months and have put it through some real use. It comes with an impressive wall charger. Some of the wall chargers for other units that I've looked at are kind of got a wimpy wall charger and that's why it takes so long for them to charge up. This is a pretty impressive unit and with some pretty impressive outputs. So let's take a look at the tag on the back of the power unit. Because it's the model AC200P, it's got a battery capacity of 2000 watt hours. It can take up to 150 volts worth of solar panels. Here's an important little note that's often overlooked on these units. It can only work between 32 degrees 
and 104 degrees. You can still discharge the batteries below zero. However, lithium iron phosphate batteries do not like to recharge while below freezing. I'll say this is possibly one of the first cons of this unit, and it's not really a con. It's just something you have to be aware of. Some of the bigger units and other brand units, hey, they'll have a battery warmer in the bottom of the battery to allow it to stay warm even when it's really cold outside. Again, lithium iron phosphate batteries have to be above 32 degrees Fahrenheit in order to take a charge effectively. Anything below 32 degrees and it can actually damage the chemistry of the battery. Keep in mind that that feature will cost a little bit extra money and also it probably won't come into play in most of the lower 48 states. It has 620 volt pure sine wave AC plugs. It has four standard USB power plugs. It looks like it has one 60 watt USB C power plug. I think they call that power delivery PD. It has a couple of 12 volt barrel plugs and then it has a 12 volt automotive style power plug. There's also a 25 amp output and you can buy some adapters for this to maybe like charge a battery up, a 12 volt automotive battery. So mine came with 70% charge so we'll play around with charging a little bit. We'll plug the wall charger into the wall and then we'll plug the barrel plug into the Blue Eddy. Alright, let's see what it does. It shows in the top corner of the screen that we're doing 382 watts. So I click on the adapter button and it gives me a little bit more information. I went into this little screen and found the little button data, pushed it and it has another button that says BMS maintenance. So this is telling us the state of charge, the battery voltage, the battery current, the temperature of the battery, and it's also telling us the status of the BMS. So there's a couple of ways to tell when the unit is fully charged. Obviously looking at the screen, it says it on the front, but also on the wall charger, it has a little light that shows red when it's charging, and then it clicks over to green when it's done. You can also hear an audible click when it's completely full. The first part of this test is gonna be only on the batteries of the unit itself. We're not gonna have it plugged into the wall at, in, in any way. We'll turn the power on by pushing the AC power button. And if you notice, there's a pop-up screen that you'll have to confirm that you're turning the power on. Our first test is gonna be this electric kettle. This kettle takes about the same energy to run as say your coffee maker. So it's good to know the nectar of life will still flow. This kettle is pulling just under 1400 watts and it doesn't seem to be any problem at all. Our overall charge started out at 70% and we finished up at 60% using 10% of the battery capacity uh, to make us some tea. Keep in mind that I could have uh, offset that power loss if we had 700 watts of solar going in. We basically would have got that coffee for free. I decided next to try the 60 watt uh, USB-C type power distribution. I wanted to see if it would fast charge my cell phone. And sure enough, it did. You have to turn DC on for any of the power outlets on the front to work, or if you want the wireless cell phone chargers on top to work, you must have the DC turned on. Okay, I've hooked up a watt meter to this thing, and now we're gonna do some tests before we bring it out to the farm and really put it through the paces. I thought it'd be a good idea to use the watt meter to make sure that the display was correct. Turned out that the display was right on, maybe even more accurate than my watt meter. The next thing I did is plugged up the power wall pack. I wanted to make sure that the unit would charge the batteries while uh, in use and it never missed a beat while plugging the power in and unplugging it. So uh, this is an absolute plus. It makes it an up system. I've seen several videos online about this unit and one of the things I noticed there's not a lot of videos about like long-term heavy use. So I took this heater, put on the unit and ran it wide open until the battery completely discharged. The unit took care of everything. It even uh, it shut off it's then it shut off and still had enough power to run its display but let you know that it was at zero. And also I plugged in the cell phone and a lamp and had a cell phone charging on top. So it was, it was getting a good workout. One thing I found that was absolutely awesome is while this unit run continuously at about 13 to 1400 watts, 
It did have a cooling fan that would come on every now and then, and even so, the fan was very, very quiet. It's a very, very good fan. It was so quiet that you could leave it beside your bed and run it all night, fully loaded. Uh, I can see this being used for someone with a CPAP or some sort of medical device that needed to have uh, emergency power. This would be a great unit for that. I forgot to push the record button, but we did plug it back in and it charged from 0% back to full charge in just under five hours with just the wall power brick only. So the next thing we did was take it out to the farm. We wanted to see what it was really made of, if it was gonna be useful for us in a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, I had a piece of equipment that needed some welding done and I said, you know, I'm gonna try my little 110 welder. And I was pleasantly surprised that it held the welder just fine it really surpassed my expectations using the welder. A few days later, we needed to rip some lumber on the table saw and I was a little concerned, not only because of the initial surge when you turn the motor on, but when you start cutting a rip and it puts the motor under extreme load, which also increases the amp requirement or watt requirement. So I was concerned about it, but it again, the, the Blue Eddy uh, AC200P went right through it. I was more than satisfied. Uh, I can see this being a really handy tool for those quick jobs. In closing, we've got a lot more testing to do and we'll show you this throughout the next year. But the first couple of months of use, we've done a lot of things that probably other people wouldn't have done like using it to weld and it's held up really well. I even dropped it out of the back of the truck once. There was no, no additional damage or anything, any kind of damage whatsoever. The unit is pretty rugged so I would feel really comfortable taking it camping or uh, on the trip or using it on a job site. Uh, we haven't had a chance to use the solar yet, but that's coming. We'll use the solar system once we get it set up. And I'm excited to see how that handles because the idea of having power on backup really intrigues me. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you like more like this, leave us a thumbs up and leave us a comment. God bless, have a great day.